Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. So for today's video we are doing a what's for dinner to give you guys some meal ideas and to share with you guys what we had for dinner this week. I will be leaving all the recipes down below if you guys want to check them out. The only recipe I don't have I believe is the one that you guys are about to see now which is my ziti recipe. Frank actually modified it so we're having his version tonight which I think I like a little bit better than mine. But anyways I hope you guys enjoy. Alright so now I am going to make my version of the baked ziti so what you'll need is two jars of the Bertoli tomato and basil sauce one jar of the Alfredo sauce of course some ziti noodles a pack of ground beef and a pack of mild or hot uh, sausage I use the hot sausage at work because it gives it like a little extra kick but with the kids eating it mm -hmm. I figured mild would be the best My version to this recipe was to mix the spaghetti sauce with the brown meat and then mix the alfredo with the pasta and kind of use the pasta as a bottom layer and then the meat sauce on top. He just adds all the sauce together which I still tastes amazing and it's a lot easier to do that way. And then he'll layer everything together almost like a lasagna. You guys will see that here in a second. I also want to add that the sausage is optional. You could just use ground beef if you wanted to, but if you like extra kick or extra spice, then definitely go with the sausage. All right, so this is finished cooking. I'm just waiting on the noodles to be done and the sauce to heat up. So this is what I was talking about with the layers. He does noodles, sauce, and meat, and then repeats it, and then he puts this in the oven at 425 for 30 to 40 minutes. Just kind of eyeball it. Make sure to put foil on it as well. We're also putting a pan underneath, just in case anything spills over. And then he'll take it out of the oven and then add cheese. We usually use mozzarella cheese, and then he'll just put it back in there until it's all melted and delicious. <music> So for our sides, I think garlic bread or even a side salad would be perfect with this, but it is a really easy, a really inexpensive meal and it's definitely one of our favorites. All right guys, so for tonight we are having tacos. I'm about to make some fresh mango salsa. We are using a taco dinner kit. Frank does add his own seasoning to the ground beef, but we're gonna be mainly using it for the mix and the taco shells and also he likes the soft tacos so I, do, I need to get those out we have some soft tortillas and the kids are most likely gonna want quesadillas but first i'm gonna go ahead and make the salsa because that's what takes the longest and my recipe is pretty simple you're just gonna need cilantro tomatoes i like using roma tomatoes red onion i have two limes a mango or you could use peach or you don't have to add mango or peach at all salt and pepper and then a little bit of garlic powder so I'm gonna go ahead and start making that I'm gonna dice my tomatoes mango and onion and also the cilantro you pretty much just gonna cut everything up and mix it in a bowl So I just wanted to share with you guys how I usually dice up to my tomatoes. I like it with no seeds because I don't really like the salsa to be too juicy. So what I do is I cut up the tomatoes in quarters and cut out the seeds or like the middle part and cut it long ways and then cut it 
again to dice it. I don't know, you guys can probably see it better in the video than me trying to explain it, but that's the way that I like to cut up my tomatoes and that's the best way that I think it tastes with the salsa. Oh, and another thing, you could add jalapeno, but if you like spicy salsa, definitely add it. find a recipe to make my own taco seasoning because like I said we just use the taco seasoning out of the kit but I want to be able to make it homemade because we do add a little bit of chipotle seasoning. Frank started to do that and I love it. It gives it a little bit of extra kick and spice. So if you guys have your own seasoning recipe or your taco seasoning recipe or know of a good one definitely send it our way because we have taco nights or tacos at least once a week. So I included this in here because I wanted to show you guys what the kids ate. So Nolan and Harlow had quesadillas with avocado and strawberries. And then Aria is the only one that likes tacos. So she requested a taco, some salsa, and strawberries. So we have our taco shells, ground beef, cheese, cut up avocado, our salsa, some chips. Alright guys, so for tonight's dinner, we are making a crock pot recipe. It's called cheesy crock pot chicken and rice. This is not all of the ingredients. I'll show you guys the rest of the ingredients after the chicken cooks because that has to cook first. I've never made this recipe before, so I hope it turns out good. This is not all of the ingredients right here. This is just everything that you're going to need now while it's cooking in the crock pot. And then we'll add a few more ingredients later. But you're going to need a can of cream of chicken soup, a can of cream of mushroom soup, two cups of chicken stock some olive oil spray because I'm going to spray the inside of the crock pot I really need to get some more liners you're gonna season your chicken with pepper onion powder garlic salt um, I don't have any paprika but that is also in this recipe so if you want to add that you can and one diced onion and some minced garlic I'm just using the jar kind to save some time and then five chicken breasts I'm only using four so first we're gonna add the chicken add their seasoning on top and then we're going to add our onions the garlic and then the soups and the chicken stock and then we're gonna cook it on low for five to six hours or if you're cooking it on high for three to four hours so I just realized that I forgot to spray the crock pot so crossing my fingers it doesn't stick. All 
right guys so I just took out my chicken and shredded it and I'm gonna add it right back to the crock pot and now I'm just waiting for my pan of water to boil so I can cook two well the recipe calls for two and a half cups of cooked rice but I'm gonna just make two cups of rice I'm just using long grain white rice so I'm gonna make the rice and then you're going to add it into the crock pot and add the cheese but I'll show you guys that here in a minute So the rice probably had about five more minutes to cook, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it into the crock pot. That way some of the juices from the soup can soak into the rice. guys so the cheese is pretty much all melted this is like ultimate comfort food right now which is exactly what I need since I've not been feeling too great I forgot to mention that 30 minutes before you're done if you guys wanted to add in sliced mushrooms you can I know the kids would not eat it if I put mushrooms in it so I didn't put that in there but that is an option but everything's done this is all done the cheese is pretty much melted we're gonna have some broccoli some steamed broccoli for our side but yeah this is how you make cheesy crock pot chicken and rice So for dinner, we are having round steak and gravy. We kind of already started, so that's why everything's all over the place. Actually, it's Instapot round steak and gravy. A little nervous to use this. What? Not that noise. That's... Oh, the canned? These are canned green beans from my grandfather's farm or grandfather's garden. I love these. So They're really I'm good. Like, I want them all. I know. Like, and we don't even have to do anything. Just heat them up in a no, pan, and they're ready pan. to go. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just so it don't. Uh, it kind of yeah. neutralizes a little. Yeah. Bit. Some of the salt that's in it because when you can stuff, you use like a lot of salt. So. That's fine, but babe. I am so excited for this. They're so good. I'm a little nervous to use the Instant Pot. I've always have had a love for the Instant Pot. It's because I haven't really learned how to use it. Frank's parents got me this for Christmas and I feel so bad that I have not used it yet so I'm starting to use it more because I really love it. I'm figuring it out. I got my instructions right here. Frank's helping me. I'm just a little nervous but we're gonna we're gonna get there and we have some mashed potatoes starting right here because it's gonna take a little bit longer. So you peeled them, cut them, and we're waiting for them to boil. I'm going to sear my round steak before I put it in the Instapot. So I'm going to do that two minutes on each. I'll show you guys. Kind of, I'm going to put a teaspoon of butter in here, sear them, and then we're going to saute the onions and garlic Ooh, in the Instapot. Yeah, we're going to we can saute that, and then we'll cook it. So you're going to need onion for this recipe, garlic, two tables no teaspoons of butter, round steak. Okay, that is your table what did I say? Tablespoon. Tablespoons of butter. And then four to six things of the round steak. And then two packets of onion gravy. And I think we need a, some water as well. Yes. But I think that's everything that you're gonna need for the steaks. So we're doing four at a time. Yes. We'll have to wait on those. But so two minutes on each side. Two to three minutes. I've already melted one tablespoon of butter in the pan and you're gonna need the other tablespoon for the onions and garlic. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a question. Yeah. So with your pressure cooker, how does it work with putting everything in it? Well, you're gonna saute it first. And then, and then you just kind of like stack them in there or do you yeah. just kind of... We're just gonna put everything in there with the gravy packets and everything in it. Oh, wow. So in like 20 minutes. Then what? I just had an accident. My water broke. I hope not. Okay. okay, so we got the onions and garlic sauteed. We're gonna add our round steak to there, and I just heated up two cups 
of water and added the two packets in there and dissolved it. So we're gonna add this, pour this over, and then I think it's good. I'm so nervous to use it, but it's gonna come in handy. I think we got this. More you got this. Pot. Just dump it in. There. Yeah, I know. I just didn't want to have another it's all right. accident. All right, so you're gonna add your onion gravy mix. Pour it over there. Steak. We're gonna move it over there, okay. Because we don't want it, the steam to go onto the cabinet. So, All right, is it sealed? We're gonna do meat? Yes. Meat. Lid. The lid's not Ready? on there. Okay, 20 minutes. 20, and pressure food? Or start? Start. No. There you go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, so the only thing you had to do was put 20 minutes and then not put anything on it. So you just did 20 minutes? You didn't press anything after that? No. All right, so the Instapot has eight more minutes. I am finishing up the mashed potatoes. You guys can modify this however you want. I usually do two tablespoons of butter, some milk. I just eyeball it, just splash it in there, a little bit of pepper, and if it needs some salt, I'll add it, but most likely it's not gonna need salt since we salted the water and the butter. I kinda like taste test it as I go, so I'll mix all of this together, taste test it, and whatever it needs, I'll add to it, and I'm just gonna use my mixer to mix everything together. I think you're supposed to wait till that thing is down. No, it said to release the pressure. This is the only way to release the pressure. I'm just nervous that it's going to explode and hit the ceiling. Don't. Right, guys so that is going to be it for this video on what's for dinner please 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 let us know if you guys like this video if you guys would like to see more videos and more videos about food in general like grocery hauls definitely give this video a like I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you guys so much for watching we will see you in our next one bye guys